Whoa. Wow. Dude. What, <laughs> what creates a real sweet flavour? And uh, let's get a fork. Mmm. Mm. And it's fresh, you know? Natural. Come on. Really well, you know. Come on, eyes and. Wow. Come the Odyssey. Oh, that's great. You bet it's kind of like. <laughs> Hi there, Yanis and Amis with you. What am I doing in this strange position? I, I, you're probably wondering. But I am face to face with the product of our next guest, and that is Sydney sculptor Vince Bozzo, spelt Bozzo. Is that correct? That's correct. How are you doing? Good. How are you going? Good. I'm getting very close to your to your art, it's to your fine. sculpture here, aren't I? Well, it's as close as you like to get. So, so it's it's said in Italian, Vince Vodso. 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 That's right. But it's in Australia they Bozzo. say Bozzo. Bozzo. Yeah, Bozzo. Bozzo. That's it. Yeah. So, what? Very interesting sculpture. So, so this is uh, is that sandstone? It's Australian sandstone. Yeah. Yeah. So whereabouts does the stone so come from? Generally, uh, most sandstone comes from Gosford quarries. Uh huh. And and depending the type of stone, actually, I don't think this one is. This is actually uh, one I've just um, found in the building site. But yep. generally, um, the white stone or the stripe stripe band sandstone, uh, they're called in, in, from Gosford where they dig them up and yep. it's different uh, areas and uh, most of the white and the stripes called Summersbury sandstone. Wow, okay, so more about y your sculpture because this yeah. is this is sandstone sculpture. Yeah. And and how would you describe your work? Because this is a very interesting, is, this okay. a, is that a man or a woman? Well, okay, well, okay, it's good that you said it's a man or a woman. It, generally, uh, um, an artist starts with an idea and for me, I tend to think that it's a male head. Mm -hmm. And I get, I probably get a little bit upset when people think it's a female. So yeah, in a sense, it's a yeah, bit male actually. Yeah, um, it's a bit it androgynous. It could be an androgynous. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and that's a better yeah. word. It's okay. Um, I can live with that. But there's, there's once yeah. again, it's a stereotype of Australia that mm. anything that has a, a sort of a, uh, how do I say, a sensitivity about it is described as feminine. Uh, I mean, if you yeah. look at Indian culture, you yeah. know, the men have some of them wear makeup, and it's, it's supposed to be masculine. Mm. Uh, so that, that's just a. So something we're very stereotyped in Australia that we have this and that, you know. Uh, okay, so so this is sandstone, and yeah. and you said that that it, it's actually not finished yet. Is that true? This one is this particular one isn't finished. Um, yeah. I've actually had it in, uh, in that state for about two years. I'm working on about six different sculptures at the moment, huge, larger scale mm -hmm. works, marble works. I work in bronze, marble, mixed media, and drawing and painting. Um, yeah, generally, the, the, if you're going to ask me what my ideas are, uh, I'm very philosophically based. Um, so the reason I brought you just as a, as a s sample of my work is a, a, a male head for me, uh -huh. a sp spiritually inclined, and a female figure. This so, seems, but he seems sensually inclined, and it's almost okay. like it's almost okay. like he's he's basking in his own ideas. <laughs> this good, is what good. I feel like, okay. and 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 there's something there's something kind of like. Oriental about him because yeah. you know you've got the slant for the yeah. eye, yeah. just Slim for the eyes, eye. and then yeah. and then you've got that you've got that that long nose, but then you've got these these big right. sensuous lips sensuous and lips, yeah. and and that that really sensitive chin and and bit of a fat neck at the moment, but we at won't the talk. Moment, yeah. but you can always carve that down. No, you know, well, we're yep. still working as okay, I said. Cool. It's just yeah. and then they've got this this short kind of like afro yeah. kind of like very short afro haircut there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do do they have a name yet? Um, uh, generally, the, the head, I've been playing around with this concept ooh, for about eight years, where it's actually a reoccurring theme in my work. The head for me is, um, the title of the head, uh, I play with two titles, one's called uh, Philosopher, Artist, Poet, Mystic. So mm. I see it in that, in, in that uh, fashion, that, uh, first a philosopher, and generally my work starts from a philosophical background, I'll come back to that later. Mm -hmm. Um, the philosophy is striving with words to find something. The artist gets caught up with his ego. The poet, similar to the artist, almost tries to transcend the artist, but gets caught up with ego as well. So out of all the fields, the mystic is that I think see as the highest position in our society. Whereas I guess people from an economic background would disagree. Mm. But anyhow, that's... Uh, yeah, that's interesting because... Uh, 
you wonder how it's all going to end up. I think at the end of the day, the mystic will win again because, <laughs> you know, our our existence is reaching this point of 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 limitation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's yes. True, yeah. All right. Well, I want to have a look at this at this sculpture here because I haven't had a really good look at it, and and this is obviously some sort of a female form, female form. and 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 it seems as if, uh, to me, this looks like a woman that has this incredible egg in her, but then yeah. her egg also uh, seems to be her bottom, yeah. or something like that. It's almost like it's it's almost like she's been overtaken by her 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 ability to, to give birth, you know, it's almost like she's, she, she's totally impregnated. It's kind of like, you know, she's got this really, really big bum and then she's got this, this huge tummy. Mm. And, and, and how would you describe this work? Well, well it's funny that that's, uh, I'm probably known for big bums and uh, spiritual sort of head. So uh, it's look, funny. It See, you be. might make up a critic in the Herald soon yourself, might, honey. You know. Wow. So tell me, it's, more about Descartes. Well, generally the ph philosophical background to my work is called the Cartesian Dilemma, which is this concept of the mind and body split. A lot of philosophical movements, like the Catholic Church, is, has been built within that concept that the body is something and the mind is something else. The spiritual and the physical. That's how I see, uh, that's the reason why I bought you just two works that just have a I mean, I do all sorts of work, but these two, just to give you an idea of this dichotomy, which I see myself um, caught at the moment. I don't seem to get out of it. I seem to be stuck at this. Uh, although, as you suggested, the sensuality that you see in the head, mm. um, perhaps I am bridging, bridging that uh, physicality. Maybe there is a spirituality even in the figure. You Let's know? have a look at this here. Look at this. The head. That's and an that's almost like a piece. shoulder, isn't it? It's like the head's on yeah, the shoulder. Yeah, that's right, that's right. There's, there's just such a, an incredible, Simplified, beautiful, uh, rounded, smooth kind of like feel about, about your work, thanks. but combined yeah. with, with, with the features. It's almost yeah. like it's smooth so, and it's yeah, yeah. chiseled. It's okay, kind of like, yeah. yeah, it's like two okay. energies happening there. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you don't only do stone. How about this amazing work here? Now, what's happening here? Okay, that's a reference to uh, a famous uh, 20th century artist, Marcel Duchamp. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. I always called him Ducamp. Ducamp. Okay. Okay. He, was, he was famous, I think, in the early 1900s right. for, for claiming uh, that, that a urinal was art. That's right, and, the and ready made, it's yeah, called the ready-made yeah, art. Yeah, ready-made okay. art. And, and he was a huge influence in Andy Warhol's art as well. That's right. And the, yeah. the beginning of uh, anti-art could be probably pinpointed, and not necessarily, but pinpointed with Duchamp. Yes. yes. And my, my question to Duchamp, uh, I have a lot of other questions to him, but um, is that he actually gave up art to... He had a fascination with chess, so, so he gave up art to play chess. So my, my feelings are that if an artist is really passionate about his work, he would continue doing art no matter what. Yeah, well, it's almost, so it's almost like, like a shadow, a um, uh, surface. Yes, he was wearing a glove or something, you know. And he was also one of the first multimedia or protest art okay, yeah, artists yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's have a look at this work. How about we move chairs and we can we can kind of like sit on either side of the work. Okay. Wow. And so this is a reference to, again, as I said, it's the Duchamp. Uh, ready-made wheel. So what what he did was he got a found a stool, and just had a, a bicycle wheel, put in, and that was his work. I've actually added more. Obviously, I've added things to it. So but my thing's you know called. What? There's almost something. Look, there's something religious about this. I don't know. I see something. You know, a yeah, bit Michelangelo. Name, it is, yeah, isn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah, Michelangelo. Yeah. And and you've got all these messages. So so yeah. would you describe this as a multimedia sculpture? Um, there's, uh, there, it's, it's almost like uh, a hundred books in one work. So yeah. what I'm saying, yeah, it's a lot. It's full yeah. of ideas. Because, because he's obviously Egyptian. Yeah. That one's all obviously a bit Michelangelo yes, that's right. and heavenly. Yeah. Um, you've also got pop culture here yeah. with this green guy here. You've, you've also got almost. Uh, now come on this angle here. Huh. This is almost. It's, it's like Humpty Dumpty. Huh. This guy here. Okay, he's going actually Babylonian king. Oh, okay. Know. Well, that to me is kind of like Humpty Dumpty. And um, and what else can we see here? Uh, let's have a look. Oh, there's the mermaid. There's a mermaid. Yeah. Uh, there's the Buddha. That's right. Um, 
Who's okay, that? so who's this little boy? Okay, the little boy is a reference to myself. So I've superimposed myself in this work called the, Ret uh, the Ready Made Time Machine. So I've gone into, so e each little section of figures, there's sort of a little conversation going on. So the little guy with his stripe, as I say, is me, and having a dialogue with a certain reference to a historical figure or some fictional uh, figure. Um, and there's almost something... So there's a thing of high culture and pop culture, um, a, a battle between the two things. And also happening. there's something, just something, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts oh, Club. There's just something, yeah, yeah something 60s. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so so could you also say that it's, in a way, that it's postmodernist because because it's well, it's kind it's of like it's a bit of everything in a way, yeah. kind of, yes. I don't know, you know. Well, Postmodernism is, is, in a sense, is an anti-art thing as well. It's, it's a dialogue towards postmodernism. Okay. I, I, only sh I had this shown in the gallery once, and one of the our prominent critics only had two words to say. While, while it was in, uh, the thing I find about critics is that they are the, la the least people that appreciate art. Um, I think his words were, Vince Vozzo's ready-made time machine was just too vulgar to talk about. Yet people were having dialogues with it and enjoying it. So it's my work's trying piece. to get in, in yeah. touch with the general public yeah. instead of having the highbrow yeah. idea of art in an art gallery and not really having a dialogue with people at all. Wow. So this work is trying to re-engage um, dialogue with, with the okay. community. So tell me, where is your work exhibited? Oh, I've, I've been just about every gallery in Sydney. Uh, wow. At the moment I'm not, I'm not with a gallery. Um, there is a few galleries with interest, and so I, I'm not committed at the moment with a, with a particular gallery. Wow. So okay. Does that kind of like that makes you more independent, doesn't well, it? Well, you know, the reality yeah. is sculpture is uh, it, it is not an easy. There is a few things that have helped. Uh, a few art competitions that have come along that have helped uh, sculpture get a better a better profile. Mm -hmm. um, I used to say that sculptors were were probably at par with poets in Australia, whereas mm. I see poets, poets... Can we turn this around? Yeah, sure. Okay. Stay right there. There you go. Yep. Go on. Yeah, um, the, 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 the sculptors were, were at par with poets in Australia, whereas I, I, I see poets... That, yeah. We've got a poet coming on next show. Okay. Yes, yeah, so a very, very famous poet. I hope he turns up, because if he doesn't, I'll be very embarrassed. Okay, well, okay. Well, I was going to say that the poets, uh, I, I tend to think, should be the highest... In it. Uh, acknowledged in Australia yet because in Australia we have sports people and politicians on the media yeah. and that's well, it. Sometimes, um, sometimes I feel that our culture uh, idolises and cherishes the wrong kind of people. I mean I'm not, look, look there's nothing well, wrong with true. sports yeah, but I just, I just feel that sports doesn't exactly breed intelligence or philosophy. Well, th th there's a reason for that. Why? Yeah. Why? The question, once again, yeah. philosophical. And that is to idea. control people. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's to so ke keep pe keep people controlled. Yes. Quiet. Keep as yeah. Marie Antoinette give them cake. I think give them cake. Well, <laughs> please don't say give <laughs> them cake back because to the kitchen, <laughs> please don't say give them cake because I gave them cake uh, this <laughs> morning and right. um, the cake disappeared very quickly. So so they wanted more cake and right. there was no cake left and <laughs> we went to the stir fry. But anyway. Okay, so what's this? We've got the pretty girls. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's a reference to Ulysses. Uh huh. Um, yeah, you've got to, to understand each section. You've got to oh. read hey, the bubble. On. Hang on, Salvador Dali. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That, that's just an, another something Salvador sort of, Dali. sort of. It's just making poking fun of uh, the isms. Oh, good. Try. Yeah, that and broke in the car. Broke. Oh, no, sorry. I'll, I'll repair that later. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, wow. One of those unfortunate this things that is, happens. I have to say. Yeah. The more I look at this piece, the more... The more ideas you'll get out. Yeah, yeah the more You've I got to look, it. really read into it. Yeah, yeah and it is yeah. unique. Here you go. Like, just, I'll just pick any yeah. section randomly I can talk about it. I mean, here you have the Christ figure, yeah. and there you have the <coughs> pop Superman. Yeah. So he said, please come off this cross. They're not worth it. So it's a reference to Nietzsche's idea of the Superman. Mm. Um, it's playing with that concept of the yeah, Superman. Well maybe, maybe Superman was kind of like a modern-day Christ um, in children's well, eyes because, you know, he saved the world. Yeah, what is uh, what is really Superman? Is it is it a meek and mild, or is it someone with real superpowers? You know. Wow. Okay. That's and interesting. Got, uh, little figures like um, um, Jackson Pollock painting blue poles. Yes. And I'll yes, say, and if you can read, if you read painting. that, and you, that's me going back yeah. talking to 
uh, you, you, you'll get a quid down under for the cultural cringe, the ones that want to sound like they're... Have you read that and you'll understand what he says. Yep. You'll, get, you'll get a quid for this down under. Those cultural, cringe. cultural cringes will pay anything to look, look cultural. cultural. Okay, so well, we're not... And listen, here at TVS, we're not paying anything to look cultural because it's all done for free. <laughs> Wow, what an amazing piece of work. You know what? I really feel like I've gone on a journey with, with this sculpture mm. and I feel, I feel there's something so timeless and timeless, eternal yeah, about your stone culture. Yes. So, so you're obviously a very, you're quite versatile. You really, well, uh, you know, yeah, I get, your, your thoughts, your yeah. thoughts are in your work, aren't they? Yeah, well, um, someone like, say, Picasso, you know, had a vocabulary that was quite huge, but yes. the trouble in Australia when you say, do I belong to a gallery at the moment, one of the reasons why I don't is that um, galleries tend to, in Australia tend to pigeonhole you into one thing. Yes. Whereas I think a, yes. an because artistic a gallery, person... Yeah, because a gallery yeah. on some sort of level is a retail outlet. Well, that's it. It's you basically know, a shop. And retail is marketing. Yeah. yeah. You know, being yeah. pigeonholed and, yeah, yeah. you know, you're in a price frame yeah. and all. And it, Whereas and I think it's creativity has to be, uh, yeah. it can be anything, you know, it can yes. be done with anything. It's not yes. necessarily stone or well, mud thing, or... Well, well uh, a couple of years ago, um, I went to a place up in the Blue Mountains. Um, uh, it's a spiritual place called the Brahma Kamaris. And oh. uh, it's kind of like a, um, an alternative religious sect. Yeah. And know, yes, yes, they're quite incredible. And, and they actually had a, a workshop that weekend called Spirituality and Creativity. And, and I just had the most incredible insight because, because I realized, or they told us, uh, that, and, and, and it dawned on me that, mm. that, uh, that we, we are a result-driven society and that true creativity was process, not result. For me, it's, uh, it's um, yeah, the process is to be in solitude, mm. in order to create these sort of thinking yes, things. That's true. It's a quiet, it, quiet space where you create these ideas. Wow. I do others. Uh, I've got a whole lot of sculptures like this, but the reality is, that this has probably been shown once in a group show, and that's it. There's that's no market, yeah. no gallery has been really. Oh, Vince, this works great. I mean, yeah. but. The market is here at TVS. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much oh, for thanks. coming. Yeah. Good luck, thank Vince. You. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Thank, you. thank you. Vince Vozzo, spelt Vozzo, thanks for coming in. And another fantastic artist that we're so happy to put in the spotlight because they're truly original. Yanni's and Oliver, we'll see you again very soon. What do some of Australia's biggest corporate identities have in common? A professional looking corporate DVD. Over the past 20 years, Granger Television has been producing corporate DVDs, helping companies build their awareness and helping them secure more market share. When McDonald's wanted to celebrate 30 years of trading in Australia, they asked Granger TV to produce a one hour TV special to showcase their history and the new way forward. When Hyundai wanted to showcase what makes their cars stand out from the pack, they commissioned a production from Granger TV. And when Tip Top opened their new Sydney factory recently, Granger TV was asked to record the event. Award-winning documentary producer Greg Granger and his talented team of cameramen, producers and editors will show you the successes and visions for your company to move forward and grow. Every company has a great story to tell. Let Granger TV bring yours to life with a professional DVD and increase your market share. Contact Granger TV today. Yep.